Hey, my name is Max and I am the Comfy Coder. Welcome to the first episode of this new series where we're going to talk about Rust, the programming language. So get comfy and we'll dive right in. Now at this point I would be really surprised if you never heard about Rust. But if that is the case, let me just give you a quick introduction to what Rust is. Rust is a compiled programming language that shares a similar space in the programming world as C++ does. It started out in 2006 as a private project of Mozilla employee Graydon Hoare and had its version 1.0 released in May 2015. Today, Rust is maintained by the Rust Foundation, which is a formation that was founded by five big companies, among them Google, Microsoft and Mozilla. Over the last few years, Rust has seen an immense increase in popularity and is regarded as one of the most loved programming languages by developers. But enough of the history lesson. Let's now get into the reasons why Rust is such a popular language and why you should care and might even try Rust yourself. In order to understand why there is even a need for a programming language like Rust, let us first take a look at what the languages C and C++ are mainly used for and what they are really good at, because this is the same niche that Rust is going into. C and C++ are known as so-called systems languages, which means they are, amongst other tasks, well suited to program whole operating systems. Therefore, performance and the ability to program very close to the hardware is required. On the other hand, you also want the possibility to introduce higher level abstractions, because otherwise huge projects like an operating system become basically unmaintainable. However, with great power comes great responsibility. These languages allow you to allocate and modify memory without any guardrails attached. And if you're not careful, you can quickly create a memory leak or corrupt your whole program. And this is just one reason why C and C++ are known to be notoriously hard to learn. Now this is exactly where Rust comes in. It aims to be in the same niche as C and C++, meaning that you have a very performant language that is compiled to machine code, but it improves some of the areas where C and C++ are really lacking. Rust can do this because it's a relatively new language and it doesn't have to provide backwards compatibility for something like 50-year-old projects, like C does. As you will learn in a minute, Rust actually manages to keep all the advantages that C and C++ have as a compiled low-level systems language, but it provides a way more modern approach to programming, which arguably is way easier to pick up for modern developers. On top of that, Rust has put some guardrails in place, especially regarding memory management, that will guarantee that a whole category of bugs that has been plaguing C and C++ developers for decades will actually never appear in your Rust programs. So let us take a look at three features that I find to give Rust an absolute edge over C and C++. Number one is its unique approach to memory management. One problem that every programming language has to solve is how do you manage the memory that is used within the program? The two main approaches here are number one, let the user do it, or, number two, introduce a garbage collector to the language. Allocation and deallocation of memory are actually somewhat slow operations, and therefore C++ puts it in the developer's hand when these slow operations are going to be performed. This gives the developer very fine-grained control over the performance of his program. However, with increasing complexity of your code, it becomes harder and harder to realize when memory should be freed. And if you continually allocate memory, which you don't free, you have a bug called a memory leak, which in the worst case might just crash your system. This is why languages like Java, Python or JavaScript introduced a garbage collector. The garbage collector is a task that is run in the background, which continuously checks for variables that are no longer needed and frees their memory. This way you are guaranteed to have no memory leaks, however, you have no idea during development when the garbage collector will run and whenever it runs it will negatively impact performance. There is a plethora of applications that are absolutely critical in terms of performance. 
just think of real-time systems or even computer games. It would be really annoying if that garbage collector is dropping your FPFs ever so often. Now in terms of memory management, Rust has a very unique system in place, which is based on ownership and borrowing. The concept of ownership and borrowing is quite simple. Every bit of memory that is allocated is exactly owned by one variable. Once this variable goes out of scope, Rust automatically frees this part of the memory. If a function now wants to change what is stored in the memory, it can borrow from the variable. Additionally, a new variable can take ownership of this memory, so when the old variable goes out of scope, the memory is now not deleted because it has a new owner. With this concept of borrowing and ownership in place, Rust can guarantee that every program that compiles is free of memory leaks. The second feature that really stands out with Rust is how errors are dealt with. Most programming languages have some concept of throwing an error. However, whether you want to deal with that error or whether you want to just let it crash your program is up to you. This is very different than Rust. Let's say, for example, you have a function that opens a file and wants to read some data from it. However, there's always the possibility that this file cannot be opened because either it doesn't exist or you might not have the permission to access it. Now you have two options in Rust to deal with that error. Number one is the function itself deals with the error in some way. So, for example, it could say, OK, if I can open the file, I'll give you what is contained in the file. And if I cannot open the file, I'll just give you some default data back. You do have a way more elegant option though. Instead of directly returning the data that is to be read from the file, you can return a result object. A result object can hold either the data, which would be the case if everything went OK, or it would be a wrapper for an error, which would be the case if you could not read the file. In order to get to the potential data contained in the result object, the calling function has to unwrap the result object. Here, there is some logic in place that in case an error is contained in the result object, you have to deal with the error. Otherwise, if no error is present, you can just unwrap your data and everything goes as normal. So therefore you know when your program compiles that all the errors that could potentially occur are already dealt with in the code. The third thing I really love about Rust is Cargo. Maybe if you've also developed C++ like I did, you can relate to the struggle you have when you're trying to compile someone else's program for the first time. You can just pray that there is some good readme file that details how to compile the code and where all the dependencies are. And obtaining those dependencies usually involves you to go to some web page that looks like it's been built in 1995, because it was, and download some zip files that contain C++ code. You then have to tell your compiler and your linker where all these sources are, so that in the end it still won't compile. With Rust, those problems don't exist. Number one, there is a single source of truth for all your dependencies, which is crates.io. Installing those dependencies is actually a piece of cake. You just use your Swiss Army knife for Rust development, Cargo. You want to set up a new project, use Cargo. You then want to build that project, you can use Cargo. You want to run all of your tests, use Cargo. And in the end, it can even format your code. Now, having said all that, I really think that Rust is the programming language of the future that is going to take a significant market share from C++ and C. It offers a great developer experience, not only due to its conciseness, but also due to its vibrant ecosystem that is very easy to access. And last but not least, it has a very cute mascot. If that doesn't convince you to learn Rust, I don't know what will. So if you are now really interested to learn Rust, you've come to the absolute right place. Just subscribe to this channel because I will be uploading a full tutorial series on Rust starting from absolute zero. Until then, stay comfy.